there everybody. In this very, very quick video, I'm going to show you how to finish off, so tie off your projects and sew in your end. This may sound like a very simple and easy video, which obviously it is, but it is something that I've been asked countless times to produce. So obviously a lot of tutorials just show you the stitch, but don't actually show you how to tie off at the end. So anyone that's wondering, this is the Lotus Flower Blanket Pattern by Hooked by Robin, which I will obviously leave a link to. But I'm just finishing off this Lotus Flower now, and so I thought it would be a good time to be able to show you exactly what you would need to do. So when you come to the end, you will do your final stitch. So whatever stitch, obviously, that your pattern requires, so you'll complete that last stitch and then you will simply slip stitch to wherever you need need to. So you'll insert your hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So that is your project finished. So now to tie off, you're simply going to chain one and then keeping that loop on your hook, you're going to snip off your yarn. So I've actually just come to the end of my whirl, so I don't need to snip off. But you would snip off, and then you would just pull that loop and that tail all the way out through that stitch. Give it a little pull, just to tighten it up. So that is your project securely fastened off. So it is a very simple chain one, snip off, and pull the tail out through that loop. So that is nice and secure. So now we just want to sew in the end. So obviously you'll just work up your darning needle. And then there are lots of different ways, but I tend to work my tail down through a stitch. And then if I've got an area where there's lots of stitches worked, or if I've got the base of the stitches, I always aim for those because they're the most secure bits. So if you've been working in rows, obviously you'll have a nice base of stitches to run across. I'm just going to turn mine over. I'm going to run this tail down through the centre of the stitch. And then you can see I've got the bottom of lots of stitches here and I'm going to work through those stitches. I'm going to go along. So if you were in straight rows, you would just work one along and then find a very slightly different place to work back again. So I will go back towards the other direction. And then I would do the same again work back along the other way once more. So if you're working in rows, I tend to, let's pretend that this is a row here. I would work from the end, I would work across, and I would go probably a good three or four inches. So always leave long tails if you can. And then I would go back towards the edge of the blanket. So I would go all the way along the base of the stitches and all the way back again and then I would snip off at the end because then you've got a nice tidy place for when you put your border over the top as well. So I'm obviously ready now. Once you've weaved in the end a couple of times you can just snip off and you're completely sorted. So very very quick video for tying off and sewing in ends and I will also leave a link in the description to another sewing in ends tutorial just in case you want to see it done in the rows like I talked about. I do already have one like that on my channel and I will also leave the information for this beautiful lotus flower blanket as well. It's a lovely circular blanket and for anyone who's wondering I've used a shapey's whirl for this so I'll just zoom out slightly just so that you can have a very quick look at the blanket. Obviously it's not lying flat at the moment because it's all crumpled up. But yeah, it's a beautiful circular blanket done in the shape as well. 
But thanks as always for tuning in for this tutorial and I will see you for another tutorial very very soon. But bye for now.